Rightio, so I wanted to film this video for those people out there that don't have a bowl saver, but they have material laying around or have material in their shop, but they're just a little bit, I don't know, they want to come up with some different shapes and try different things, but the material is still wet. So how do we go about getting that ready for it to dry? So that's what I want to cover in this video. You don't have a bowl saver or you have one uh, and you've got material there that you want to create different shapes with. So. I've got a platter, a bowl, and a catch-all, and I'm going to go through all three of these shapes today and how to rough them out and get them ready for drying so we can then go ahead and finish turning them in the future. So I've got a uh, VM120 chuck here with the wood screw mounted, ready to rock and roll. I've got an 8mm drill bit, and we're going to get stuck into it. Now normally my platter material is a lot bigger. I, I turn a lot bigger bowls. For instance, these bowls out here, I turn larger pieces, but not everyone has a large lathe. So that's the main reason why I wanted to create this video in a lead up to last week's video. Whoever didn't see last week's video, it's all about bowl coring. Um, I'm just gonna turn the lathe down and we're gonna feed this guy on. I hold my hand on the bottom, hand up the top, and then it'll find its way and then as it makes its way on there, just let go of it. Move this out of the way. Lock the spin, oh, lock the hand wheel off, come back over, and then tighten it up. Like that. Right, so this is going to be a platter. And how I'm gonna go about doing it is, I'm going to true it up first, put a recess in the bottom, and then go and do the bowl, and then all the or the catch-all and then come back so I've got a way of remounting it on the lathe either way so I will put a recess there and I'll have a tenon on the top so then I can come back and remount it on the lathe later on and that's one thing that I always try and do is make sure that I'm thinking a few steps ahead so if I'm turning a large bowl how am I going to finish the bowl? I'm thinking about what finish I'm going to put on it. I'm thinking about what's it going to, am I going to sand, like what grits am I going to sand it up to and all that sort of stuff. I'm already thinking about it before I get there. So I'm just going to drive in and true this up. bit more speed and we need to be closer. Now I'm looking up the top most of the time because I don't want it to be on the piss and I don't want it to be raked right back. I just want to true this up, take that down. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Now normally my platter material is about, you know, it's probably 10 mil, 20 mil less than this. So it's, it's you know, only about the two inch mark. So it's not normally that thick. We'll true this base up. See, I'm bouncing along there and I'm pulling it as I'm going. I feel like when I do that, if I just keep pulling, I'm gonna ride the undulations. So what I do is I press in and I cut it back. And then I'll pull back. So this is going to be the base. We've got a nice little bit of piece of quarter saw material there, which is, thank goodness. <laughs> now, I've already measured up for my recess. So I'll come over here, I'll show you what we're gonna use. We're gonna use the shark jaws. I've gone to the outside, I've kept them slightly open, so it won't be a fully closed circle. So I've got some wriggle room when I come back to mess around with it. I'm gonna take the majority of the bulk from the, from the top side. So bring this up to center height, mark it. A bit more over the left of it. That's it there, left side touches, right side shadows, as we all know, they live up there. Grab out. 
These are the tools that we're going to use today. So I'm going to show you a scraper and all that later on as well. Now I've got a little 12 mil gouge here. I'm just going to cut back towards myself. And then draw the skew into our mark. Clean that little crown up, that little raised piece there. Knock him off. Now just remember we're roughing out. This doesn't have to be bang on, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So just, just keep that in mind. What we're, what we're doing here. Okay. I'm going to take a lot of that waste out. Just make sure we're running on through there. Right. So that's an oversized tenon. We're going to come back and when we put this back on the lathe, we're going to, we're going to rip this down. So it's going to be a nice little plate instead of a massive big bowl. So I didn't want to turn this into a platter, but because um, I don't have any other little quarter saw material and I don't want to give you a, a bum steer and say that I'm turning platters whilst not using quarter saw material. So platter, so let's get the bowl on, eh? Put these guys back over here. So like I said later, I'll show you a, I'll show you a scraper, big 38 mil scraper or inch and a half and a little French curve as well, homemade French curve. I'll show you those in a sec. Get our drill. I've already pre-marked these, but I've got two dots there that I've just noticed. I've got these templates all cut out, put to the side, that I also have for my bandsaw. Oh, sorry, over near my bandsaw, my arch nemesis, I keep a lot of my templates. So what I'm looking for is a little punch, my little, love this guy, he's a cool little punch, eh? Little, put him in there, make a little mark. See, I knew I was off. Right, how cool is that, eh? Anyway, some little things in life, apparently. Now, I wouldn't necessarily call that anyway because it's just really small, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't normally call that, just turn the lathe down low, feed it on there, see? Feed it onto the wood screw. I'll hold my hand down the bottom and a hand up the top, just gonna give it a bit more, bit more mumbo, like that. Then when it reaches it, I let go. I don't hold onto it because you'll hurt your hands. Tighten him up, we're good to go. So it's got good depth. When that won't go anymore, it's really bound in there. It's not gonna go anywhere. True this guy up first. Right. Back to our 19 mil bowl gouge. Any bowl gouge will do it. I just use the 19 because my 16s are my finishing tools, but it doesn't really matter what you used. Now we don't have to true this up, but I am anyway. We're not worried about torn grain, because that was th those cuts I was making were really aggressive, but I just want to get this done for you as quick as I can. Down vibrating across. And then bring it. Right. Now I know that this bowl is going to have a one third of a foot on the base. So a beautiful bowl, is, the foot is normally one third of the overall diameter. We're not going to stress as much at the moment with this because we're just roughing out. We're just getting things going so we can put them aside, let them rest for, you know, six months, wherever you, wherever you are in the world, a year. And then we come back, return them so they're just... So they're finished. So this is the main principle. You just get them on the lathe, get them turned, and then get them off. Come over here. 
Did that sound motivating? Oh, it sounded quite motivating to me, anyway. Right, so this is our tenon. I'm gonna raise this up, center height, mark our tenon. See it's, too, see it's on the inside there, so I'll shift it towards myself. And now we're bang on, see that? Right. Brother's pencil. Now, I don't normally mark the tenon up to start with, I normally remove all the weight, but I just want to show you, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to cut the tenon just yet. I'm gonna shape this bowl up the way I want it. So I'm just gonna bring that side away. Just stand out of the way. I'm gonna put the straighten over to the doorway. So that doorway over here, this way, not, it's not a doorway, but it's just a, a figure of speech the way it, Never stand there when you're turning. Never stand in front of it as much as you can, if you can prevent it. Because you might get hurt. See him flying over there? Just over, flying. Just aim. Aim him over that way. Rough bowl shape. And now, Sometimes when I'm just mucking around, got a bit of an OG. When I'm just mucking around, I'll go, right, I'll, I'll pick up another tool. If I'm not under the pump, right? If I haven't got like a show or whatever to get ready or for or something, I'll, let's just practice a push cut. Tool rest in. So we're gonna find it. And I drive it. We're gonna go in. Out, and then back in. Pushing with my right hand, just keeping that tool down on the rest. If you lose it, just come back and get it. Just touch that top up, don't overstretch it, just touch it. Cool. It's a little, little push cut there, just, I don't know, just to clean it up and just to get some, you know, practice in. Whenever you get the opportunity, I'll show you the bottom bowl gouge later too. I'll do it on this one. So now I'm gonna bring that side down. Bring him down like this. Like that. So get rid of the majority of the bulk. Come over, grab our one inch skew, come back. Make sure we're riding on center. And now we're gonna drive that skew into that line. Done. Don't worry about that little bit there because I'm using shark jaws, actually. If you, if you don't have shark jaws and you just got like a standard chuck, so you got like a chuck jaws like this, dovetail jaws like that, where they're flat on the bottom. This is what I mean by shark jaws. They're hollowed out in the guts there. You want to flat that base off and make sure it is not going to bottom out in the bottom of the jaws because that would be annoying for you. There we go. That's all we need to do. Let's get him off. Little push cuts here, just cleans things up. Undo it a bit. Hit it in reverse. Turn it back off, that's our bowl. Now, let's get the catch all. We haven't got a mark there, so let's find our little template. I bet this is gonna be way too, oh, okay, way too big. Maybe the Maybe it was my little six inch. Yeah, look at that. It's, it's always hanging around. But a uh, little. Sometimes it's good to just eyeball it up, but this is just for completeness. Oh. Put that there. Grab our drill. Bring it back down. Now, this catch all bowl will have a recess as well. Good. I don't know why I checked it. Hey, that's fine. Let's turn that lathe right down. We're just gonna hold the top, hold the bottom, and feed it on. All the way there, ready? And then just let go at the end. Tighten it up. Now, 
All right, okay. Same thing, true it up. Just come out, find it. Actually, if, if you're ever in doubt and you're doing like a live edge bowl or something like that and it's a real weird shape, you didn't have the best time on the bandsaw or something like that, you didn't cut it perfectly circular, I'll show you a little handy trick. Get a piece of cardboard or something, something that is contrast to what, you, what you're working with and then slip it underneath what, what you're doing. So pop it, we'll go that way. Go underneath there like that. And then that way, when you're standing back here, you can now identify that edge a lot more. And then... You're not searching for it. I've got way too much distance there, but that's just a really cool little trick when you um, want to find where the edge is of your, you know, live edge bowls or something like that. So yeah, let's true this up now. You can see that it's not running true or spinning true. So I'm going to show you that little drive technique that I do. So I come in there and drive, see where the, see where the gouge is. Right, now drive that in, bring it back again. Righto. Now, how I'm going to remount this later on, so I'm always thinking 10 steps ahead or you know, always thinking ahead of what I'm doing. And what I mean by that is when I form this recess and turn the inside out and let it dry, how will I remount this back on the lathe? So my options are to put the chuck jaws in side of it and then expand them. That's the easiest way to do it. And then reshape your little recess, the base, and then turn it around and do the inside or the side and the inside. <clears throat> I'm just checking this one again. Yes, that was the recess. So that's the easiest way of how to do it. This is a massive recess, but all right. Mark it. See why I'm on the inside? Bring it back over to me. And now I'll be bang on. Split the difference. That's us there. Brother's gonna mark it. Thank you, Dan. We're good on the sides. The base is good. Let's just form the recess. So come over. Well, just step over. Grab our tools. We're not leaving the lathe. So we don't need to turn it off, we're not leaving it. Lowering this down, you would turn it off, but not just, yeah. When I come up to our edge there, just, just take it easy, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Just flattening that off. Drive the steer in. Can you see on the other side there? That's what I'm watching when I make these little bowls. Or any recess. Right, so that's the closed form. Let's take it off the chuck. Undo that. Hold it. Let's get the wood screw out. Now I don't necessarily always put my wood screw in there, but I do because it's handy. Because when I'm doing the stuff down here. Now, also whilst we're here, I see a lot of people, if you're really struggling to get your chuck off, really struggling, open it up, lock the wheel off. So it's pretend but it's locked off. Drop your Allen key down the guts like that. Can you see that? That camera there will be able to get a better idea. Drop it down the center like that and then hit it. And that'll just unbind that metal in there, okay? That's the easiest way to do it. Pop him back on our, on our wall. There we go. These are just dowels off a broom handle, probably the mother-in-law's. 
Shall I say? Feed this guy on. And I really enjoy using shark jaws when I'm there at the end. Just, just give it a little flick so that metal binds on there. Feed him on. Hold him from the front. And now, because he's open like that, it's going to work in our favour to get our calipers down in there like that. See that I can get behind it? I learnt that off Glenn Lucas. Very handy. I have my tool like so. I'm going to go in and then bring it towards myself. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. You all know how to do that. So let's go. Different projects. These are really fun. These catchalls sell uh, quite easily, but from my experience. Now I want to go for an inch thickness. That'd be good. I thought I'd just punch through the base, but that thickness there is great. We don't need to go any thinner than that. I'm after an inch. This gear is a bit too big for this little bowl here, so I'm just going to go the 16 mil. So I'm going to cut back this way. What happened there? I was going along, and this part of the wing of my gouge caught that reel, caught that little step there, the shoulder. And that's what made me catch. I knew it was going to come, but I was going a little bit too far. Get rid of that. Now, that's that. If we want to use a big scraper, makes light work of stuff. Just support it on your rest. You, you all probably know how to use one of these. You could do all that with this. And then up the side. Now remember, how am I going to put this back on the lathe? I'm just going to undercut this shoulder here, undercut under here. Under here. Like that. So when I go to put this back on the lathe, my chuck will expand on the inside there like that. So it'll expand, I'll reshape the tenon, I'll reshape the mortise, fix the foot up, and away we go to completion. So that is the catch all bowl. Let's put it over here with these other little friends. Now we're going to go with the platter. We all love a good platter. Pressing from the front. Push it in there, lock it off. Right. Now, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to create this. You can leave the wood screw in there, but as this warps, it's going to go out of shape. Either way, we can put a tenon on the front, which is what I'm going to do, but that'll also warp out of shape. Regardless what we do, it's all going to warp, but we just need a way of remounting it back on our lathe, back on a chuck, so we can hold it, reshape it, and then go away again. Just need to keep the sizes a little bit bigger. So let's just let's just start and do it, eh? 16 mil, 45 degree bevel on this bad boy. Clean that up. I'm gonna get rid of all this weight out of it, right? So I'm just gonna swap here. Just gonna swap because he's not my guy that I do that with. And try and get in the habit of that, I guess. Try and stick the tool. That out for that one purpose, if that makes sense. Remember, that's going to be the bottom. Soften that edge. Now we're going to form up that tenon because we want to be able to grab it to reshape the recess. I know I keep saying that, but it's just important that I remind myself. <laughs> See this little trick here? Where's my pointer? That, that there, that little gap within your jaws, I don't want to scratch my lathe, is why it's important to keep that because we can tell that we've got an inch there now for drying. And that gives us enough cushion when we're going to 
uh, reshape it later on. So let's just trawl this up. You don't need to be precise with all this, you just got to get it, get the work done. And I know that's me being very, you know, just get it done, but it doesn't have to be pretty. But this is where you can practice a lot of your cuts and stuff too. And then that, just soften that up. Cool. That'll be a little plate one day, this little guy. So that's our, that's our little plate. Put him over there with the rest of his mates. Now, and I always like working in stages with bowls. When I mount them, I put them, I put the grain in the middle. So you can see that there, and then I pinch down on it. Especially when, when doing bigger bowls and it pulls and squishes all those fibers together. With this bowl, I want to be able to remount it. So I want to be able to put my jaws in there one day when it's dry and have it flip the other way so I can touch up the tenon on the bottom so I can then turn it around to tidy up the bottom, tidy up the inside. Apologies. Let's chew up the face. And now we're gonna go on the inside. And then handles, see my hands out here. Arms out. Watch the gouge. Open. In. Open. In. Open. I see some people holding it like this, doesn't really make a difference. Like that. I'm pushing into the headstock. I think I went a little bit too keen then. Oh no, I might be right. I'll check that thickness. Oh, just too, not enough, Kez. Oh, that's right, aren't we good? Yeah, that's good, good as gold. Beautiful. And now, what do I say? Bottom bowl gouge, right. So, I'm just gonna, just cause it, I'm being annoying, I'm just gonna tidy up that rim. And then I'm going to cut my little, remember I was going to cut that little, that little step in there, so I can come back and grab it. Bottom bowl gouge is this guy here. It's a 60 degree bevel with the heel removed. Now I learned this off Glenn Lucas, don't go in at a horizontal or something like that. Start up high until you can start seeing those little shavings. See that little shaving come on off? and then begin the cut. Don't, don't start like that because you will just get a catch, okay? So, like I've said heaps of times before, their DVDs are online. Mike Mahoney has just released all his DVDs. Start up high and bring it on. He's just released all his DVDs on YouTube here. Glenn Lucas, I highly suggest you getting his DVDs and watching them. See a little, you just start it up, start it up and bring it on and then away you go. But I don't want to go too deep, I'm going to go too deep there. And I don't want to do that. French curve, same thing as before, hold it under your arm like this. So it's supported, bring it in there. I'm just going to move them out. Otherwise I'll look at that bowl in six months time and go, what was I doing? <laughs> so that's that bowl there. Now, how to dry them. This video just here will show you the entire process of how I go about drying my timber products all the way through the step, the processes, what I use to do it. 
This video here is four different ways of how to remount bowls and platters and things onto the lathe once you're ready to go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you all directly. Cheers. Bye.